Meditation Part 1 The Mind and the Brain Dear friends, Meditation is not a subject. It is the core of our being. It was once considered an esoteric subject and now scientists want to know all about it. To us, it is one of the great joys of life and any joy of life is in turn a meditation. Today, let's begin a phase of digging deep into science. It happened that a student once came to his teacher and said, I'm ready to do what it takes. Teach me, beloved teacher, what I need to know. The teacher said, Very well. In that case, I have two gifts for you. The first gift is this insight. So listen. It is often said, the body is a prison. It ages and decays without reason. But I say to you, my boy, it is a great pastime, a nice toy. Body is not the disease. In fact, it is the very emblem of ease. Sit still and the body's mechanizations become the antidote to the prolific hallucinations of a mind in rote. No need then for the mind's delusion, its stupor and its imagination. The yogi says, sit, sit daily, systematically, learn to live emphatically, celebrate the treasures of this magnificent biology without regret or any apology. Whether in a prison or under a tree, Use the body to set yourself free. We just heard what the yogi says, that body is not part of the problem, but the solution. And now here is the second gift. Seek not to become thoughtless, my boy. Instead, let the thoughts be and you enjoy. They say thoughts take you on a roller coaster and tie you up in knots, always leading to disaster. But I say to you, seek not to end the thoughts, instead, let them be. In understanding, there is an end to all pain and suffering. Don't take thoughts to heart. Let them end before they start. Watch them so, watch them so. Keep the smile on and let them go. That's understanding, my friend. It is the end without an end. The inner journey to witnessing is the closure for every single thing. You just heard the second insight. Seek not to become thoughtless, my boy. Instead, let the thoughts be and you enjoy. In this blog, in part one, we will explore the relationship between the mind and the brain. Scientists 
have so far mostly operated on the assumption that reality is purely physical and it comes from the feeling of I am the body. At the other end of the spectrum are the ones who deny the body completely in the name of spirit. And bang in the middle is the subject of meditation as dealt with in yoga. Meditation is now being taken seriously by the scientific community because after almost a century of experiments with the most potent drugs, psychotherapy, behavior modification strategies and cognitive training, there seems to be no end to stress, depression and mental trauma. At the same time, simple techniques of meditation which the yogis have taught for thousands of years seem to really work. In a study conducted by the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health in US in 2011, in which MRI were taken of the brains of 16 participants two weeks before and after the participants joined a mindfulness meditation program conducted by researchers from Massachusetts General Hospital, Bender Institute of Neuroimaging, Germany and the University of Massachusetts Medical School. The researchers concluded that meditation can cause improvement in mental health. It was found that a brief period of mindfulness meditation increased the amount of grey matter in the hippocampus and the parietal lobe areas of the brain and improved attention. Results from a 2012 study from the same institute suggest that meditation can affect activity in the amygdala, a part of the brain involved in processing emotions, and that different types of meditation can affect the amygdala differently, even when the person is not meditating. In another study in 2012, researchers compared brain images from 50 adults who meditate and 50 adults who don't meditate. Results suggested that people who practiced meditation for many years have more folds in the outer layer of the brain. This process called gyrification is thought to increase the brain's ability to process information. A review of three studies in 2013 concluded that meditation may slow, stall or even reverse changes that take place in the brain due to normal aging. A study found that participants who engaged in a body scan meditation for about 20 minutes reported higher levels of happiness and a decrease in anxiety compared to participants who just rested during the 20 minute time span. These results suggest that an increase in awareness of one's body through meditation causes a state of selflessness and a feeling of connectedness. One recent study found a significant cortical thickness increase in individuals who underwent a brief eight weeks mindfulness based stress relief training program and that this increase was coupled with a significant reduction of several psychological indices related to worry, 
anxiety and depression. So the scientific community is now intensely researching how the brain responds to meditation and this is something we must know about because this will allow us to understand ourselves better. At the same time, there is the question, what is the relationship between the brain and the mind? We have been working on the asana sculptures. When you think of the word sculpting, maybe the image that comes to mind is a man sculpting a piece of marble with a chisel and hammer. Or maybe it's an image of liquid glass being blown on a flame. Or of the river that sculpts the very earth through which it flows or of the air sculpting rocks in the deserts. Earth, water, fire, air sculpt even the hardest of objects. What about the fifth element, space? Does space also sculpt? It is now being proposed in science that yes, space itself is not an emptiness but the subtlest of matter. Space is not easy to grasp as an element because it seems to be beyond our sense organs. In yoga theory, the element of space is associated with the subtle capacity of hearing, with the vibrations of the thought process. When we look at MRI scans of the brain, we can literally see that different thought patterns trigger different networks in the brain and over a period of time alter the shapes and sizes of certain structures and these changes affect every single cell in the body. In meditation, we try to consciously bring about desirable changes in the brain that is literally sculpting our brains. Stay tuned. <laughs>